the Abacos. We had a beautiful evening here last night. Went for a nice walk on the island. It's wild. This island is about two miles long and it has a 5,000 foot runway on it. So half of the island is a runway for planes to come in. Um, it's pretty desolate out there, but they said they get about 10, pla 10 planes a week, which is pretty surprising. We're having some really odd weather in the Bahamas right now. We've got winds coming from the west for the next five days. So when you're looking at the map and anchorages that are usually protected from the trade winds that normally come from the east, those are all exposed right now because the wind is coming from the west. So it's like it's got a mirror image of everything. So looking for anchorages and safe harbors is a little bit more challenging. So what we've decided is we're gonna go down, take the kids to see a place that we visited the first time we spent time on our boat, which was Piggyville, No Name Key here in Abaco, uh, home of some pretty cute little pigs. So I think the kids will have fun running around out there reliving those memories. And then we'll probably have to hop into Green Turtle and see if we can either get a mooring ball or a slip in there for the night. Uh, and it should be a well-protected harbor from these westerlies. It's going to be about a 17 mile sail down to No Name. And again, the wind's coming from the west, but we still should have a nice angle of wind on the beam. The wind's pretty strong. It's blowing 17 to, I think, 22 knots. So we'll probably have to put two reefs in the main and then we'll just fly the jib and hoping for a sporty little passage and kind of watch this girl dance. So before we take off, Brad's just getting the water maker going. Okay, it's a Spectra Cape Horn 330 and it has two pumps on it. So if one pump failed, uh, you could just continue the run, the water maker in the other, or if you choose to go half power, just need some water. So it's flexible on that side, but generally our water's been pretty good, really good when it's colder. Uh, when you're in the Bahamas, I find the parts per million is above 500, so you taste a little bit of the salinity in water. We're doing 16 gallons an hour, um, which is pretty good. Uh, we have a 200 gallon water tank on board, so do the math. The cool thing with this water maker that it's 12 volt, so it runs right off the batteries. You don't have to, if your inverter goes uh, to convert, you know, 120, 230, 240, whatever you have. Um, a lot of times you have to run a generator to run your water maker. This one has very little power draw and easily runs off AGM batteries. We've always run it off just the batteries, pretty much. So, so it's around, I think, four or 500 watts of power to run both to be able to make water. And it's pumping right now. So what's your PPM right now? Our parts per million, we're running around 100, 100 PSI, uh, which is good. Our parts per million is 506. But as we get into colder weather, colder water, then it will go down a lot more as well. The salinity goes down as well, so. What's the lowest you've seen it? Uh, we've seen like 120 you know, at times. And we were running a couple days ago at 750. And when only one pump is running instead of two, your salinity can go up some. So we have both pumps working again. So I can do laundry. Yeah, so, yeah, so longer showers now. I like it. We definitely have it pretty good on hang time. A lot of little luxuries and one of them that is Pretty critical is a washing machine. And so super appreciative to have it on board. It's really small, but it gets the job done, especially when we're out on the islands for a long time. So we put a straight up washing machine in it. We didn't choose a dryer. It just was too much of an energy draw. So we just do laundry on sunny days and we hang it out to dry. So here it is. It's hard to show, but there it is. And it's running. So yeah, we just run the 30 minute cycle. Anyway, that's good living on a boat, right there. Cruising may seem like the ultimate way to chill out and live a stress-free life, but I'm constantly reminded that this is not the case. It's hard to ever relax or tune out your surroundings. Things can go wrong on any day at the most unexpected times. We were pulling off the dock in Spanish Key and had a perfect departure plan. The wind was blowing me off the dock and I had plenty of room to turn. These darn pilings foiled my plan again. Brad was unable to release the forward line from the piling. The nylon rope was stuck. 
My stern was free and drifting toward another pillar, and with the windage on the boat, there was nothing I could do about it. Finally, Brad released the line from hang time, and we were forced to leave it behind. Such a simple maneuver could have had some pretty serious repercussions had he not acted so swiftly. This sport keeps your mind and body strong and will take every opportunity to remind you your insignificance in relation to Mother Nature. Kitties headed over already on their boards. They took the stand-ups over to Piggy Beach. You really can't come to the Bahamas without going to see the pigs. So we've seen them in there running away from them a few times and we're just gonna go in and do a little visit with the pigs too. We've been saving some food to feed them. Let's show them what we got. And we got the slop bucket. Oh, it stinks. Pigs are gonna love it. Lots of garlic for them. They really need to turn the lid of this into a frisbee. Yes. Like, why wouldn't you now not? Okay. He smells it. So it makes a pretty easy anchor check, especially when the water looks like this. How gorgeous. Let's see what we have in the fridge. So in our backdrop we have Treasure Key. It's pretty sad, it got hit really hard with a hurricane. And just even looking from here, there's a lot of devastation, which is bringing on the drinks right now. <laughs> it's pretty sad. Uh, a little scared to go to shore and see what really happened out there. We know it's not going to be good. Uh, my parents lost their house in this hurricane, so we'll we'll see that a little bit too. See a roof that's gone and half the structure gone. Probably find some mementos lying around scattered. Yep. Yeah, T. Is that shallow? Was it? So Tizi's standing on the anchor, if you see her right there. She's standing on the anchor. Oh, 
That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so we're probably about six inches from touching. <laughs> okay, so we'll do some light rum. Uh, I think this rum is from St. Vincent. We have some Malibu coconut rum. We have some flies around here. <laughs> They're starting to really bug us already. We've been here like 20 minutes. Some mango juice. What's nice in this kitchen is that everything is really close by, right? within arm's reach. And you can cook a lot of great stuff in here. Yes, you can. Epic meals on hang time. This is nutmeg right here. So inside it's just a nut and that's from the grenadine. So we had a whole bunch of them and just picked them right off the trees down there. And you put a touch of that on top. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Let me get it. Oh yeah. We did eventually visit Treasure Key and were heartbroken to see the damage they endured from Hurricane Dorian. Walking down the former golf course to see Brad's parents' home missing from the foundation was still shocking two years after the storm. We were flooded with all the memories we created in this beautiful place. Of course we left with a sense of melancholy, but for me, I also found a renewed sense of adventure. None of us know what storms are headed our way. It's so important to enjoy the moment take advantage of the sun when it shines and the winds when they're in our favor.